So, good day, dear students. Today we will talk about the skin cancer and melanoma. And here you can see the plan of our lecture. The skin. The skin is the largest organ of the body. It helps to protect us, help with the temperature regulation and allow us as a sense of touch. The skin has three two main layers, epidermis, dermis and subcutaneous layer. The epidermis is the top layer of the skin. It is thin and protects the deeper layers of the skin and the, uh, the organs of the body from the environment. The second layer, the dermis, the next layer down. It's much thicker than the epidermis. It contains hair follicles, sweat glands, blood vessels and nerves that are held in a place by protein called collagen and once the collagen thickness it's difficult to replace. The last layer is the subcutaneous tissue. It consists of con connective and fatty tissue. The fatty tissue or adipose not only is cushions and insulate the internal tissue, but also ultraviolet light stimulate the production of melanin pigment. This run the cells move up to the surface of the skin. The result is a tan. Even though this tan is acting to protect our body, tanning has occurred because of damage. Exposure to ultraviolet light stimulates melanin because ultraviolet rays break parts of the DNA and one of the pieces that breaks off trigger that produces enough melanin, otherwise known as a tanning. Unfortunately, it's an initial breaking of the DNA to stimulate melanin production that can damage your skin permanently and lead to skin cancer. What is the skin cancer? And the skin cancer is a disease in which cancer malignant cells are found in, in the skin. Every year about 28-30,000 cancer patients are detected in Kazakhstan. The leaders in terms of morbidity and the number of deaths are the Pavlodar, East Kazakhstan and North Kazakhstan regions, where mortality rates exceed the national average by 30 to 40 percent. Melanin offer uh, protection against ultraviolet rays. For African and other dark-skinned people, Conversely, fair-skinned people are much less protected and more susceptible to skin cancer. Furthermore, albino skin offers no protection. Also, dark-skinned people produce more melanin than lighter-skinned. Lighter -skinned. All skin has the same number of cells that manufacture the melanin. The same individuals who are most likely to burn are also most vulnerable to skin cancer. Studies have shown that the individuals with a large number of freckles and moles also have a high risk of developing skin cancer. Also, individuals with darker skin are less likely to develop skin cancer. They should still take action to protect their skin and eyes from our exposure to the sun. People who have had at least one severe blizzard and sunburn as a child or teenager are at increased risk of melanoma. Because of this, doctors advise the patient to protect the children's skin from the sun. Sun protection uh, may reduce the risk of melanoma later in life. Sunburns in adulthood are still a risk factors, are still a risk factor for melanoma. So overexposure to ultraviolet radiation can cause the skin cancer. Natural sun and artificial ultraviolet exposure, just like uh, tanning salons, are associated with a skin cancer. Since sun beds cause mostly indirect DNA damage, free radicals, they will use the associate, associated with the deadlines form of the skin cancer, malignant melanoma. Skin cancer caused by chemical exposure are rare when compared to cancers caused by ultraviolet exposure. Certain chemicals exposure can directly cause the skin cancer of the exposure can increase the risk of skin cancers from ultraviolet exposure. 
here is the types of skin cancer we will discuss. Precancerous diseases are actinic keratosis, cancerous squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, melanoma, and others. Actinic keratosis. The two words actinic keratosis are Greek and describe precisely what is happening to the skin. Actinic means rays or radiant energy. Keratosis stands uh, for heart and callus. Actinic keratosis are areas of callus, thick and scaly skin caused by chemical changes brought about by exposure to radiant energy, sunlight, tanning, beds, etc. So we see these lesions on body areas exposed to the sun. The face, ears, lips, scalp, hands, neck, forearm and other are susceptible. They are generally small in size, slow growing, roof and the pure pink, red or flesh colored. Early on, it may disappear, only to reappear later. It's not uncommon to see several of these lesions at the time. And people with one actinic keratosis usually develop many more. Those having this condition need to be seen by this, their physician and managed by a dermatologist. Seen it can develop into squamous cell carcinoma. Actinic keratosis is a warning that your skin has suffered significant sun damage. Uh, about the squamous cell carcinoma. <sighs> squamous cell carcinoma begins in squamous cells which are found in the surface of the skin. They are thin, flat cells that look like fish scales approximately 20% of all skin cancer. Uh, squamous cell carcinoma <clears throat> is a common type of skin cancer. It develops in the epidermis from squamous cells which produce keratin. Usual presentation is slowly growing scaly or crust clump. Can present as a non-healing sore or ulcer, punched out in appearance, sometimes grows as a rapid over a middle for the weeks. Here you can see the squamous cell carcinoma and also on the tongue squamous cell carcinoma of the head, of the face, located in the face. So how do you think? Is squamous cell carcinoma or is it? How do you think? So, squamous cell carcinoma causes, again, ultraviolet radiation damage DNA in the skin. <clears throat> squamous cell carcinoma may develop in an actinic keratosis or patch of bowel disease, genetic predisposition to develop CSS, smoking especially CSS lip, thermal, burn, thermal burns, chronic leg ulcers, immunosuppression, organ transplantation patients highly susceptible. HPV infection implicated in genital CSS, pre existing skin conditions, leaking sclerosis, and leaking planus can predispose to development of genital and oral CSS. Uh, squamous cell carcinoma, if you suspect a possible squamous cell carcinoma, refer via fast track pathway. First of all, we need to histology. To confirm the histologic diagnosis in dermatology or oncology department, and uh, if we will find the metastatic squamous cell carcinoma, um, commonly metastatic, it's a five. It's about five percent from all squamous cell carcinoma cancers and most commonly from primary lesion on either or lip is associated with increasing age, associated with alcoholism and more likely if multiple skin cancer present. So you can see the squamous, scale, squamous cell cancer warning signs, it's a scaly red patch elevated with a central depression and sore that persists. 
a persistent scaly ridge patch with irregular borders that sometimes crust or bleeds. An elevated growl with a central depression that occasionally bleeds. A growl of this type may rapidly increase in the size. An open sore that bleeds and crust persists for weeks. So today and also we will talk about the basal cell carcinoma. It's a skin cancer that arises from a basal cells, uh, small round cells found in the lower part of the skin epidermis. It's uh, over the 75% of all skin cancers. It's slow growing skin cancer and generally treatable. Um, the most common types of the basal cell carcinoma, it's a nodular, superficial, morphoaphic, scar-like pigmented um, uh, basal cell carcinoma basisquamous and only the first two types are seen commonly so nodular and superficial most common type of location of skin cancer basal cell skin cancer on the face it's a small shiny skin color swelling telangiectasia across the edge may have the central ulcer or scab, so edges appear rolled. Often bleed spontaneously, then heal over. Rodent ulcer is an open sore. Facial BCC should be referred to plastic surgeon. So you can see the nodular basal cell carcinoma, the classic basal cell carcinoma. Superficial BCC is often multiple. It's the upper trunk uh, location, it's up, upper trunk or shoulders, common as side but can appear anywhere. It's a pink or a discolor patch with a raised edge on close examination. So we growing over the months of years, bleed or ulcerate easily. So here you can see the superficial basal cell carcinoma and also BCC so and we'll talk shortly about the treatment BCC it's a shave carotage excision biopsy may need grafting or flap most my graphic, uh, micrographic excision photodynamic therapy cryotherapy cryotherapy sorry and radiotherapy and remember BCCs don't like don't kill I'm sorry but can be locally destructive, yes. So let's do a quick review. Uh, first, this is thick, scaly patches of sun-damaged skin. Any guesses? How do you think, guys? It's actinic keratosis, precancers or cancer? Precancerous, yes. Second one, it's a persistent scaly red patch with irregular butters that sometimes cries or bleeds. How do you think? What is the diagnosis? Yes, it's squamous cell cancer. And um, the third one, it's a red crow with indentation in center. Basal cancer, but also we need to differentiate with the squamous cell. Yes, so we have talked about the precancerous lesions like actinic keratosis and two types of cancers squamous cell and basal cell cancers. Now, what I would like to talk with you about the dead large form of the skin cancer is a melanoma. This skin cancer accounts for more than 75% of deaths from skin cancer. Melanoma is the most common form of the cancer for young adults from 25 to 29 years old. It's the second most common form of cancer for adolescents and young adults, 15 to 29 years old. It increases faster in females and in males in the same age group, 15 to 29 years old. So having the darkly pigmented skin lowers 
the risk of the skin of melanoma but it's not a guarantee that the patient or some people or some men will not have will not get a melanoma anyone can develop this cancer on the palms of the hands soles of the feet and under the nails melanomas in these areas represent about half of all melanomas in african americans but fewer than 10 percent of persons of melanoma in the whites so <clears throat> we have talked about the precancerous uh, lesions and now we will talk about the melanoma is the skin cancer that arises in the pigment producing cells so melanoma in the average person can occur anywhere but it's most likely to start in certain locations the trunk the most common side in a man the legs are most commonly affected side in a woman the neck and face are common sites so melanocytes are found in the basal layers of the epithelium non-cancerous growth melanocytes result in the moles or frequels if cancerous growth of melanocytes result in malignant melanoma the melanoma malignant melanoma risk factors is the sun exposure particularly during childhood fair skin which which burns easily blistering sunburns especially when young previous melanoma family history of melanoma previous non-melanoma skin cancer and also large number of moles dysplastic moles common size of melanoma in men common size in the back in woman common size is the legs can occur in mucous membranes lips, lips or genital can occur under the nail can occur in the eye in brain or mouth beware a melanetic melanoma by glasgow we have seven point checklist glasgow the major features is a change in size irregular shape and irregular color the minor features is diameter more than seven millimeters inflammation ozone and change in sensation the abcd rule of melanoma it uh, consists from five letters a letter asymmetry b border irregularity c color variation and diameter over six millimeters and e evolving enlarging or changing so here you can see the malignant melanoma on the first picture uh, you can see the asymmetry border irregularity color we have a uh, different colors irregular border asymmetry and diameter more than six millimeters growth melanoma uh, is a horizontal growth within epidermis melanoma in situ vertical growth with the basement membrane true basement membrane into dermis and it is invasive melanoma and once melanoma penetrates dermis it spreads via lymphatic and bloodstream metastatic melanoma so histological classification we have uh, Breslow thickness by Breslow this is the thickness of melanoma in millimeters and the main histological classification for oncologists is the, by Clark's level they describe the which layer of skin has been breached the first uh, level by Clark's the epidermis melanoma in zero the second dermal invasion and the fifth that is the last one invasion of subcutaneous fat the treatment of melanoma is a surgical excision by oncologist or dermatologist with the two or three millimeters of invasion or margin by the excision of histology confirms, confirms melanoma. The surgery, chemotherapy and uh, immunotherapy. So prognosis of melanoma, it's a press low thickness less than one millimeter almost 100 percent of five years survival if the breast low thickness more than four millimeters only 50 percent of year survival five years survival i'm sorry remember melanoma is the major cause of death from malignancy in the young people 
So here you can see the malignant melanoma. Malignant melanoma of the fingers, of the nails, acral melanoma, it's advanced melanoma. So now we will talk about the skin cancer preventive prevention measures should not discourage outdoor activities, should encourage people to use sensible skin protection. At risk groups, fair-skinned individuals, children and babies, outdoor workers, immunosuppressed peoples, peoples with a personal or skin cancer or hereditary predisposition, family history, yes, and peoples with the more than 50 moles. So what action should be taken? Ensure advice, ensure advice can how people can assess the individual risk. So you can write it on this slide. You can read, I'm sorry. So advice, advice of the doctor, avoid sunburn. If you need to be out in the sun, do the work, protect skin as much as possible. Spend time in the shade between 11 and 15. Wear broad brimmed hat, long sleeves and trousers and choose clothes with fabrics. In summary, we have looked at the effects of ultraviolet radiation and other risk factors on the skin. We have discussed the management of premalignant actinic damage. We have considered the locally destructive nature of BCC, basal cell carcinoma. We have looked in a depth at CCC, so squamous cell carcinoma and melanoma, both of which are potentially fatal. We have looked at current nice guidance on skin cancer prevention. So how do you think? Um, where is the difference? Hmm? Normal. Here is the picture of mole nevus. This is a benign grow on the skin. While very few moles becomes cancer, abnormal or atypical moles can develop into melanoma over time. Normal moles can appear flat or raised or may begin flat and become raised over time. The surface is typically smooth. Normal moles are round or oval and no larger than a pencil eraser. Most moles, most moles develop in Europe or young adulthood. It's unusual to acquire a moles in the adult years. And abnormal. Here is the picture of an abnormal skin growth. This is an early type of squamous cell carcinoma in zero Bowman disease. This is type of skin cancer spreads outward on the surface of the skin. By contrast, invasive squamous cell carcinoma can grow inward and spread to the interior of the body. Bowen's disease looks like scalary dispatches that may be crusted, it may be mistaken for rashes, eczema, fungus, or psoriasis. So for us, it may not always be easy to tell the difference between a normal or abnormal skin lesion. In the next few slides, I want to give you some general rules to help you determine when a funny-looking skin lesion should be evaluated by a professional. So we have A, B, C, D, E uh, rule of moles I've talked about uh, earlier. A, asymmetry, both halves should look equal. B, body should be sharp, clearly defined, non checked C, color should be uniform, no different sh uh, shades. D, diameter should be more or less than uh, six millimeters. Evolving, expanding, alleging a mold that is changing or getting bigger. So, <clears throat> asymmetry stands for asymmetry. Asymmetry means one half of a mold does not match the other half. Normal molds are symmetrical. When checking your molds or freckles, draw an imaginary line through the middle and compare the two halves. If they do not like the same on both sides, have a check by a dermatologist. In this example, so you can easily see that one of the normal lesion 
when the one half of the normal lesion on the left is then almost a duplicate of other half. In the abnormal example, you can see that one of the sides of the lesion is raised and round and the other side is a flat and irregular. Um, B stands for bars. If the bars of edges of the mole are erect, blurred or irregular, have it checked by, by dermatologists. Melanoma lesions often have e uneven borders. So C stands for color. A mole that does not have the same color throughout or that have shades of tan, brown, black, blue, white or red is suspicious. Normal moles are usually a single shade of color. A mole of many shades or that has lightened or darkened should be checked by a doctor. D stands for diameter. A mole is suspicious if the diameter is larger than the eraser of a pencil. Benign moles are usually less than 6 mm in diameter. This is the size of the pencil eraser. Small lesions on the left that are smaller than a pencil eraser are usually not something to be concerned about. Larger lesions on the right that are larger than a pencil eraser can be something you should be more concerned about. So elevation, uh, I'm sorry, stands, E stands for elevation. If portion of the mole appears elevated or raised from the skin, have it looked at by a doctor. When the part of the lesion is elevated but, the, but other parts are not then that can be an important danger sign. Melanoma lesions often grow the size or change in, in height rapidly. A mole that involving shrinking, growing larger change in color begins to each oblique should also be checked. Examine your skin after a shower while skin is wet, a common location for melanoma in men is the back, is on the back, and in a woman, the lower leg. So the physician should treat the cancer with topical medication, laser freezing, and various surgeries, radiation, and other chemotherapy. So remember, clouds don't protect you. Send water, snow.